adventurers and well met. I'm Dungeon Master Joel and I'm here to get you up to speed on everything you may have missed in the last thrilling installment of Capes and Quest. The party had gained audience with Athena Taven, one of the co-leaders of the Elven Triad. Turns out Athena and her brother Orion had been fighting for control of the gang ever since the mysterious gargoyle had gotten into her brother's ear. Did I also mention that she used to date party member Vorlin? Because that sure was unexpected. Our heroes made their way into the deep woods to try and find where Orion had been building a massive zoo devoted to killer monsters. It was then that the spirit of Father Wyatt, the cult leader that lived in Antoine the Cleric's staff, offered his services as a ghost to scout on up ahead. We joined the adventure not long after that. I swear to God, if that's... <laughs> If that Hanna Barbera motherfucker pops out of there. <laughs> hey, 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 guys! Did I hear about some infiltration? Hey, hey! I just oh. groan from off screen. Oh, shit, I forgot about him. I mean, I, I mean, I'm a ghost, and I can walk through walls. I mean, happy to do some infiltration. Just show me some trees and shit. Just you know, give give Father Y what he wants. Oh God damn it, Father Wyatt! I forgot about you. I, I will burn place. this suit to the ground before we ask Father what's his name for any help. <laughs> All right, guys, you do you. Just living in the past now. You do you. You know what? I'm gonna let I'm gonna let uh, Father Ghostface Kill over here uh, go through the walls and do some recon for us real quick. Get in there, you useless unresting spirit. <laughs> All right, man, you know, I'm just glad I could be useful and shit, you know? All right. Father Wide away! <laughs> <laughs> and his uh, green ghost disappears into the warehouse, and he leaves like a slimy green ectoplasm outline as he walks we, on in that looks just like him. We could have had a talking car with a speech impediment. You all know that, right? That was like our other option. Hey, that can still happen. They're building you, what is it, a carriage back at uh, your party barge. So for all you know, by the time you get back... Are we just going to transfer his consciousness into that? Or Ooh. do we actually get him, like, exercise from this thing that I have with his soul in it? You can do the whatever you want. The first moment that we get to replace him with a shark that sounds like one of the Three Stooges, I am taking it, and no one is asking questions. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Don't worry. All right, so a few minutes later, Father Wyatt comes back, and he's like, man, that place is fucking crazy. Great, so, you were a lot of help. That was not. Could you elaborate? Yeah, I mean, this like Wyatt. this like wall to wall cages. <laughs> They're filled with all sorts of crazy shit. I saw gnolls. I saw drakes. I saw more giant spiders. There's all sorts of crazy things in there. Oh man, so you're what you're telling me is that this warehouse is full of cages with animals in them. Something we knew before we sent you in there, Father Wyatt. I mean, you didn't really tell me what else to do. Oh, it's also really cold in there, which is weird because I'm a ghost and probably am beyond all feeling. But, you know, I'd watch <laughs> out for that. Are, are, is our person of interest in there? Is, no. he, is he held up in there? Nope, didn't see no one in the office. All right, so we can just do a quick we smash and grab. We can go the office. Yeah, let's do a smash and grab. Oh, dude, you beat me to it. All right. Maybe he went to go take a piss tinkle. I don't know. <laughs> what, you don't call them piss tinkles? I do. All right, well, I'm going to leave you out. You're going to watch our backs. You're going to give us a holler if anybody comes while we're in there. All right. What's uh, All right. What's the signal word? Pomegranate. All right. Oh, no. It's just easier this way. <laughs> it's, listen, we're not making multiple safe words on this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I barely yeah, remember the reason that we're here. I'm not going to remember multiple code words, okay? Plus, you, plus it helps you remember your shame that I'm never going to let you forget. Thank you. That's, yeah, got right. got it. Cool. Thank All right, you. let's get let's do it. All right. Shame. So uh, so yeah, you you everybody hands in shame on three. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. Borland shame. <laughs> and after that team building exercise, you make your way inside. Oh my god, I got a name for the party barge, guys. What? Borland shame. <laughs> Hey, you better uh, you better call Scrunch on the magic book and tell him to start repainting that. <laughs> I am. This is going to be the one episode I don't go back and listen to. Yeah, really? <laughs> this is the only one I go back and listen to from now on. Yeah. And, and the Vorlin Focus episode became the Vorlin Dunking episode very quickly. So bad. <laughs> All right, so yeah. This is you... why when Joel asks you for backstory, you say, I have none. <laughs> Believe it or not, I tried. <laughs> Indeed, he did. All right, True so. True story. So you I literally said, I don't think I want to do a romance angle. 
I suck at those. <laughs> I think you're doing great. As do I. And yet this still somehow ended up being worse than anything you could have imagined. <laughs> Worst day of your life so far. All right, so um, you, you pull up the shutters after this team I'm building just, exercise. Yeah, I'm just the hell out of here. Oh, my God. And, uh, yeah, you, you make your way inside the place. And, indeed, Father Wyatt was right. This place is cold because you go from what was basically, you know, tropical forest humidity into a place that literally... Uh, it seems to be covered in ice. You can see your breath around here, and it seems that this cold ice is basically keeping these animals in kind of a docile hibernation type of state. Well, that's good. Okay. Yeah. That that sucks. Um, and where are we now in the in this zoo? Uh, you're kind of like in the main uh, loading area there, and uh, yeah, you see gnolls and giant hyenas and giant spiders and lizards and drakes and all sorts of crazy shit you've never seen before, and all the cages kind of make like a little bit of a maze all headed up to a, kind of an office area you can see upstairs enclosed in glass. Okay. Um, I'm definitely gonna I'm gonna head over to the office and try to end this as quickly as possible. Yeah, we'll, we'll make our way to the office. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If Vorlin is leading and the then way, we'll see if we can find some kind of a big switch up there to let them all go, <laughs> like that little girl in Jurassic World. There you go. If uh, yeah. if Vorlin is leading the pack, Vorlin, you will be the first one to roll me a dexterity check. Okay. Ooh, well, hold on. Let's look fine. Plus. Well, the 16 plus 2, so 18. Okay, so you are able to deftly and quickly dodge a falling icicle that comes from the ceiling. And this is a massive one that would have impaled you had it hit you. And you're able to jump just in the nick of time. And uh, what is it, uh, Corbin and Antoine, because you saw this, you know not to walk any further. Oh, so but there you, goes I, I'm not going to do a dexterity check. No, because uh, cause Vorlin <laughs> caught it in time. Had he failed, I would have made you all do it, but because he succeeded. Okay. Uh, I, I set a trap, or I set off a trap on accident. The, uh, oh. the, the loud noise yeah. of the icicle starts waking up some of the smaller animals, and they, you know, kind of start gnashing in their cages there. You know, you got little fairy dragons, and you got, like, uh, all sorts of other uh, tiny monstrous creatures. Okay, um, sir... <sighs> Is there any other path? Like, like, can I do a perception roll to kind of see if, like, there's any other path that we can take besides the one that almost just killed me? Sure. All right, cool. Ooh, 12, but... No, it's not. Yeah, shit. I'm rolling actually very well tonight. Uh... I got 14. Indeed you have. My perception is 18. Okay, 18. So, okay, so Corbin and Antoine discover what Vorlin could not see, and that is, hey man, if we climb on top of these cages, we'll actually get a pretty good look of the whole maze makeup of this place. It can probably get there without setting off anything. That's what I was going to ask to begin with, if we could climb yeah. on top of the cages. You sure can. Sweet. Antoine, <laughs> using his animal know-how, being a cat man himself. Climbs up oh. quite deftly. And, uh, yeah, you start walking your way around closer and closer to the office area. There's, like, a spiral staircase uh, leading up to it. And uh, below you, uh, in what you're going to have to cross over before you get to there, is a big grate. Like, a big, big sewer grate. Circular. I don't, hmm. I don't like... Grates are never good inside warehouses. <laughs> no, technically not. What uh, What are you going to do? You guys going to walk over the grate? You going to investigate it? What are you going to do? Yeah, and we it, have to walk it, over it? Yes. It should be, like, icy over there because grates are typically where fluids drain down and liquids drain down. This whole place is frozen over, so... This, uh, this ice appears to be magical and as such adheres to no logical sense. Man, there's something in that great. I fucking hate magic. <laughs> Which is why <laughs> Corbin is a punchy monk fighter. There, there's something in, under that great. If we have to walk, if we absolutely have to walk over it, like there's something down there, man. Uh, so I, I think Vorlin should go first. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> I'll go first. I'm high, baby. I'm just partying. <laughs> and, and you are the most well armored. All right, roll a, roll a dexterity. All right. 18. Oh, hot damn. All right, so you saunter... Wait, wait, 18 plus... And my dexterity is plus 2, so 20? 
Okay, so yeah, you saunter yep. and stroll like a freaking ballerina, gracefully like the cat you are. And indeed, Hi, baby. <laughs> indeed, down below, you hear some sort of snarling. <sighs> like some big monster sleeping, but it's so dark down there, you can't tell. You get the feeling this is some sort of big, deep shaft. But uh, yeah, you make your way to the other end very easily, and boom, you're at the spiral staircase to the office. I, I scream Jabba's across. Palace. I scream across, hey guys, just roll an 18 or higher. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> Here comes my worst roll of the entire night. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, is this dexterity? Uh, yes. 16, then. 16. All right. You, you, you traipse across there a little bit more defiantly than Antoine did. But, you know, you, you know you're, you're not stupid, Corbin is. He knows there's fucking something down there, and I don't want to wake it if I don't have to. But uh, as you cross over, the snoring gets a little louder and a little bit more agitated. All right. And then what happens? Let's go, Vorlin. <laughs> okay, well, no, I rolled it. So I've, with, with my pumpers, it's only a 14, so... All right, so shame, you... shame, 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 <laughs> shame, 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 shame. Antoine's very bad. I can switch bad. dice now so that the shame juju is like on off of this one and onto a new one. Antoine's friggin' Vorland's very bad, no good day. <laughs> so yeah, you, you make it most of the way across, Vorland. Again, you're trying to be very careful, but ooh, on that last, last step, your shoe ends up catching the grate and you kind of stumble a little bit on there. You don't fall in, you make it to the other side just fine but there is a bit of a rattle and because of that once you're off it you feel the ground under you start to shake quite considerably and you see the form of a massive beast pounding at the great we should run up the spiral staircase now right guys we should just go we it, should yeah it uh it, seems it, like it still seems trapped there but it's definitely awake and definitely aware and uh, actually corpin you recognize what kind of monster this is I do. Yes. This <laughs> this is a manticore, a junior manticore, but the reason oh. Corbin knows manticore so well is because a manticore, a particularly large, nasty red one called Old Crimson, killed your tribe. Oh, yeah. That was my backstory. Yes. I remembered. I remember backstory. I'm a good DM. <laughs> blood rage? You gonna go into a blood rage mode? This this isn't this isn't the one the one that killed yours old crimson uh what is it had like a big scar over its eye and was way bigger and naturally red this one is smaller and browner but definitely a manticore definitely a junior if it if it was a fully grown manticore they wouldn't have been able to keep it in the grate but this is clearly the star attraction of the zoo we should we should kill it now right before it grows up. Kills mm. another tribe. I see the wheels turning. How does he want to do this? <laughs> well, I'm still in favor of opening all these cages all at once. With the and animals just seeing how things work from here. <laughs> I'm actually, you know what? I am actually going to use my animal, whatchamacallit, oh. handling. That's it. Animal oh, handling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh... Even though it's weird since manticores have human faces. Yeah, I know, right? And, Ew. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, holy shit. I have animal handling of four. Mm -hmm. So my roll is a five. Yeah, all right. So from what you can Whoa, tell, this... Got a one. Un unlike the horses and unlike all I the other... I guess I am too filled with hate right now. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> That's a beautiful it would story. Seem I'm full of rage. <laughs> Blood rage, if you will. Yeah, this this <laughs> creature, unlike the horses and other animals that you've been able to basically horse whisper up until now, this thing also only knows rage and hate and pain. But uh, if nothing else, though, it seems to not be directing that anger, rage, and hate into any one particular direction. So as long as it's in the grade, it ain't going to be a problem for you yet. Yeah. Oh, I have a fart animal handling too. I just realized that. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. Hey, I guess it's because I'm an animal person. It helps. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna do anything with it <laughs> for this. This. This is yeah, your. It's crazy. You would definitely yeah. not want to mess with. Yeah. It. Just fun fact. There it's you go. Part of your backstory is going on here. I got no beef with the man, of course. There you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned back and go. Well, I tried. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I tried. 
So, uh, so you make your way up the spiral staircase? Yeah, yes. let's do that. All right, so uh, you make your way up there, and before you know it, you are standing in Orion Taven's office. It's completely messy, covered in paperwork. This guy clearly doesn't dust. Uh, in the back, you see the big, what you can only assume is the safe that uh, his sister, Athena, was talking about. And, uh, yeah, he's got a bunch of paperwork and shit on his desk. Um, should we rummage the, uh, can, can I, yeah, can I do an investigation on the desk really quickly? You absolutely can. Go for it. Cool. Uh, okay, yeah, so four plus one is five. All right, so, uh. I can, I can recognize that it's paper. It, it looks like a very normal desk. There is a lot of paper, but you do see one thing there that looks like it doesn't belong. Uh, I also want to enroll in investigation. Go for it. I got a... I got a 15. Okay, hot damn. So with, with Antoine helping you and guiding your hips, Vorlin, you find Thanks. something that doesn't quite belong. It's a little tiny glass ball, and it actually reminds you very much of the crystal ball that you talked to, uh, you talked with Ballarat before, that you know you were kind of keeping in contact with him. But this one looks like a tiny version, not like a big full version, but like a little teensy tiny one, probably just big enough to send one crystal ball message. Uh, I pick it up, I observe it, I say, hmm, I see, and then I put it on the floor, start batting it around and fucking with it while my homies do what they do. <laughs> the, uh, the second you start batting it around, Antoine, you start to see a figure begin to take shape within the little tiny crystal ball. It's another dragonborn. This guy is a dark dragonborn. He's got long, twisted horns there, and uh, what is it, a very coiffed, triangular beard. He wears uh, black and silver, kind of like very official military garb garb not armored and on each of his sleeves you see two tiny little cufflinks and those little cufflinks look like gargoyles i see in my head i'm imagining colonel sanders dressed up like a general in the oakland raiders army <laughs> i'll say oh, I'll now say. joel has to figure out a new voice i know right <laughs> no 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 i've been working on this one so uh, the figure in the crystal bar ball starts talking, and they, uh, they're pretty much enraged. And uh, they, uh, they begin to go on a little bit of a spiel there. You listen to me, you long-eared fucking, you listen good. We had a goddamn deal. I pay you, I help you depose your sister, and in return, you help me take High Morn and show up that motherfucker General Dijack. I thought when he died, it was going to be my time. But now we got those three from Oasis making trouble and the goddamn Emperor breathing down my neck. The timetable has been moved up. I will be there in two weeks, and you and your men better be ready to fucking go, or so help me God, I will kill you next, or my name is it Dagon Knox. And then he just, like, basically slams the crystal ball down and finishes the conversation. I was hoping there was a second message there. By the way, it's Dagon. Uh, call me back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, man, I'm real sorry about that last message. I was just going, I'm going through some things at home. I shouldn't have said that. It's Machine just, you cut know. me off. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, contact information. It's 469-33. Uh, uh, you got the rest. Your caller ID should have picked it up. Dagon, again. All right. All right. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Further, uh, further too, as you look at the paperwork uh, on the desk, it looks like that, uh, what is it, Orion has been getting basically a ton of cash infusions from the Empire, and that it also seemed that uh, he was supposed to use that money to go cozy up to the other gangs, but he funneled that money into his zoo project. Oh, man, the taxpayers oh, so are not going to be happy about this. So the other we gangs just are not let them take care of this. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, so the other gangs are not getting paid? Well, he was supposed to reach out to them and basically make the same deal that the gargoyle had made to him. You know, hey, work for us, take out the Ballers, take out High Morn, and bring in you three. And in exchange, when the Empire takes over, you'd all be taken care of. But uh, because Taven is an asshole, as we discovered, he only cared about his zoo project. What is project. up with the zoo project? <laughs> It means a lot to Yeah, me. I'm just yeah. going to investigate, but I'm not even looking for any of the stuff we came in for. I just want backstory on the zoo now, because I'm very intrigued about mm -hmm. how any of this happened. You, uh, you find a little journal there in his desk, and basically it dates back years, and it's like, you know... You know, uh, now I'm trying to figure out what his voice should be. I'm guessing if his sister is French, I'm glad you French cut me too. off because I only got a seven on that roll. So <laughs> it's, it, it, it's very easy to read. It's just like this dude seems like a sad dude 
who, you know, w wasn't honest with himself and his only love was, you know, watching the giant killer creatures in the forest. And he's just like, you know, man, one day I'm going to have a zoo just for myself and it's going to be great. That's that's why I got into this life of crime. He's he is Joe Exotic. You know, I do all this crime to, you know, deal with my animal addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, he's Elvin Joe Exotic, is what it is. Yep, I love it. I love everything about it. Uh, how do we work for this man? <laughs> Just throw our lives away. You got to work for him. You get a hundred gold a day, and you got to eat expired meat. Okay. <laughs> All right. And I get a hundred gold a day. That's crazy. So uh, yeah, right. you guys check out the safe. You do anything else in this room? Is there? A, did we find a switch or anything that? Yeah, I'm gonna opens look for a big a... lever. Uh, you guys some switch, lever, a button, I, something. Yeah, you, I, I want to take care of the. Uh, I want to take care of the chest while they're doing their thing. All right, you say pomegranate like you do, and the uh, safe opens up inside. Uh, good to her word, Athena. You find five hundred gold coins, uh, a couple watches, a couple rings, and everything. You also see a fun-looking sword as well. It's a short sword. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, is it someone? What kind of short sword are we looking at? It's a plus one elven short sword. Yay! So there you go. Hey, look, see? Your relationship has borne fruit. <laughs> it wasn't all for nothing. And uh, as, We'll see about that. As soon as you grab this stuff... <laughs> it's definitely you... for your entertainment, let's put it that way. Uh, <laughs> oh, I lo I'm loving it still. <laughs> it still makes me happy. As, uh, as soon as you start grabbing this stuff, you start hearing uh, the voice of Father Wyatt. It's muffled because it's outside, but he's yelling, Pomegranate! Pomegranate, everybody! My God, Pomegranate! And then, like, the sound stops, and it sounds like his staff was tipped over. So he's just, like, saying, Pomegranate! <laughs> I look up at Vorla, like, is that... Is, what's what's going on? No, 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 that wasn't me. That was him. Different, oh. different pomegranate. The other pomegranate. Oh, I just heard somebody screaming pomegranate and natural. Let's go see what's up, fellas. Yeah, the, uh, the temperature <laughs> the temperature here in this room also drops about ten degrees as well. I should say. So you guys are actually very chilly right now. Is there another place. way out of Why this? Why is office? this place cold? I want answers. Ask and you will receive. Find out. <laughs> All, all six of my nipples get hard from the dropped weather. <laughs> there you I'm go. I'm a cat man. Uh, <laughs> is there another way out of this room besides the door we came in, like a window or something that That's, overlooks the warehouse? It's the only one. It's Well, there's the window. You could jump out the window. In fact, looking out the window, you see standing on the grate as if he just, like, teleported in there. You see a man... Elven man, long blonde hair, wearing a brilliant blue and silver robe set, and holding in his hand a giant spear made out of ice. And uh, hmm. I was going to say, and uh, Vorlin, because you know the Taven family fairly well. Yeah, that's Orion standing there. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so, and he's standing like outside of the window. Uh, he, he's looking at you right now. Like, he can actually see you up in his office and you can see him. Be oh, still. What? <laughs> his eye is based, based on, on movement. movement. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is he controlling the, uh, the temperature in the zoo? His, his street name is Icy Orion Taven. So, yeah, you would probably agree that he is the source of all of this ice magic. You know what? I, I have to do something cool this game. Uh,. I'm going to jump through the window, and uh, I'm going to challenge him. All right, roll. roll oh, that's a, a good way to get cut up by glass. Yeah, ro roll yeah. a dex to see if this is the coolest move ever or the dumbest move ever. Yeah, you could have opened the window first. Oh, that's, a, that's an 18 plus 2. That's going to make it an unnatural 20. There you, there you go. go. All right, you, uh, you grab your, I'm going to assume, your new plus 1 short sword, and, uh, yeah, you jump through the window with a big clattering shatter, and it goes everywhere, and you do a fucking cool-ass superhero landing, and you're standing right in front of him, and he's like, trying really hard to act like it's not cool but he knows it was cool and as i land and give like a really cool superhero pose i look at him really quickly and i go hey i banged your sister i am well I aware of this <laughs> well gotta have the homies back so i'm gonna jump out behind vorlin and i, I say to him say uh he's not done fucking your family yet <laughs> <laughs> But let me ask Man, you this. I appreciate that. Thank no you. No problem. Shame. Yeah. <laughs> Shame loves company. 
So, because it's my sister. I peek my head out from up there in the office and I go, oh, wait, are we doing the shame chant again? <laughs> So who sent you? Was it my no good sister or was it my slimy business partner? We were brought here by the power of love, sir. <laughs> well, then you'll die and this will be a cold comfort. And he jams his staff down on the floor and all the exits seal up with, uh, what is it, with icicles and frost and everything. So yeah, roll, roll initiative as the boss fight music starts playing in the background. <laughs> Did he just say it's going to be a cold comfort? Oh, he's got ice puns. Is he about to make ice puns? Oh, Victor Freeze, you son of a bitch. You follow the scene. I see it coming. I see it coming. He's got... 16. He's got... Okay, shit. Where where the fuck is he in this thing? I I actually thought you would be fighting him way sooner, so I actually put him lower down in the order. Okay, so that's going to be... Vorlin, what was that? Bro, I got a 14. 14. Uh, Corbin, what'd you get? Four. You can always assume I will be the last one. <laughs> oh my god, again! And Antoine, yeah. what were you? Sixteen. Sixteen. All right. What does uh, what does Icy McGee get? Uh, he rolls an eleven. All right. So not great, but you know, not bad either. Uh, so that's gonna be eleven. So all right, uh, Antoine, you uh, you actually get the first move in on this guy. All right, all right, fellas. So we're gonna hit him with a little spectral action right off the rip. Oh, hot damn! Really? Okay. Let, let him know we're out here. <laughs> he he looks fucking serious, by the way. So that's probably pretty smart. Well, I don't, I don't, I hope I don't look like I'm joking around because this <laughs> is all right. So do I have to have? Is it something? The spiritual weapon? Can it be? A psychological weapon, or does it have to be a physical weapon that I strike him with? How how psychological are we talking? Like I, I want to make a construct of Vorlin banging his sister. Oh yeah, you can do that right in front of him. Oh yeah, you really can fuck with his head. How do we how do we measure psychological damage? Oh yeah, you can Green Lantern the shit out of that if you want. You you summon that, and he looks quite upset. Yeah, no. <laughs> Just with audio, so he can hear Vorland screaming <laughs> pomegranate into the heavens. Always will you test me. <laughs> many men have tested me, and many men are dead. Welcome, guys, to the <laughs> sex tape equivalent in D and D. Yeah, medieval <laughs> sex tape. I love it. All right, so so you have your spectral dong out. What uh, what are you gonna do now? I I'm gonna smack him with it. I'm gonna smack him with Vorland's spectral dong. <laughs> I wouldn't fuck you with his dick. <laughs> <laughs> but you can. Go for it. See if uh, see if you hit him. All right. Uh, roll to six. All right. He is able to definitely dodge out of the way of the Vorland dong. He's like, you're going to have to try much better than that, mon ami. Got to use a bigger dong next time. <laughs> I was going to say, slightly insult. Really quick, he shoots Antoine a look like really insulted. <laughs> We're just for going off of what you were assuming. That hurts. <laughs> I, I, I do what magic commands me. I, I, I just make what happens happen. I have no control over the size. <laughs> but all right, Borland, it's uh, it's now officially your turn. What are you going to do now? Okay, so you know what? As it's been yelled at to me by people in the chat and on Twitter, I do not use my sneak attack enough. Yes, and he is currently angry at Antoine, so yeah, if you wanted to sneak attack him, now would be a so, time. Yeah, once per turn, I can deal an extra damage to one creature hit with an attack if you have advantage on the attack roll. Yes. The and attack must use a finesse or a ranged weapon. Which is you all you have. You don't need advantage or attack roll uh, within five feet. I'm assuming, considering how average my spectral dong is, it's less than five feet. <laughs> but um, Tish. Yeah, you're pretty close to him. You're all standing on the grate right now. Okay. Uh, ooh, right, the great, great. With yes. the manticore under us? Yes, with yes. the manticore under us. Again, it dropped about 10 degrees here. You feel he, like, upped or downed the temperature to try and put it back to sleep. Because, again, you notice all the other animals went quiet when he went in here. But that's not to say he can do it forever. Oh, I should have made a big space heater. <laughs> so, and I'm taking the, the, I've got the plus one, um, we're, yeah. Short sword, right? Yeah, you have a plus one rapier and a plus one uh, short sword now. So uh, yeah, you're uh, you're in there. Okay, um, let's let's go with the rapier because I still got the electric shock on it. Yes, that you do. Sweet. Um, so I'm rolling twice. Yes. With advantage on the sneak attack. Mm -hmm. One is a sixteen. I need to add my modifier to it. Hold on. Yeah. 
And one's only a 10. The 16 uh, hits, but uh, that... Uh, it hits, but it does half, so you get just a little of them. Okay. And then I got the 10. Which uh, does not hit. Does not hit. Okay, why am I rolling for the uh, the 16? Uh, Is that a 1d8? Uh, d- well, it depends. Did you lead with the rapier or the short sword? I led with the rapier. Okay, there you go. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, 1d8. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, but that's an eight, so okay. that'll Locked take in. half damage. Yeah, he'll take half to that. So uh, yeah, you, uh, you 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 get him a little bit. Yeah, you, you chop his nip just a little bit. Ah, why would you do that? <laughs> that's a four. All right, we'll take it. All right, there you go. Uh, you gonna try and add uh, sneak on to that because it technically was a hit, so I think you can. Oh, okay. So in. Because it he hardly ever used a sneak attack. What's my next move on this thing? Uh, I think you just get to roll a d6 now because uh, that still counts it as a sneak attack. All right. Now, is that. There's a whole table. I think if you took another level in Rogue, if you would become Rogue level 5, you would actually get two d6s, but because you took a level in Ranger, you only get one d6. Uh, of right. Extra damage. Okay. But you well, do. Well, that, that, just, that just rolled a 3. Okay, so. well, there you go. Well, that's not yeah. too bad then. So yeah, he's you, you cut him up a little bit, but these are like very fancy elven robes that are clearly like uh, reinforced and everything. So uh, you get a little cha-ching, cha-ching off it. I think a little cha-ching, cha-ching. It's a little cha-ching, cha-ching is better than no right. cha-ching, cha-ching. Yeah. Uh, all right. So with that, it actually is going to be Orion's turn now. And uh, he is going to, already because you guys are going so hard at him, he is going to do some crazy boss shit. <laughs> right now is what he's going to do. He taps his staff against the floor once again, and you hear a rumbling in the ceiling as a sea of, uh, what is it, uh, icicles start falling down from up above into your general area. So uh, you're all actually going to have to make armor checks on this one. That is going to be a 10 plus 4. So uh, who, I don't think that hurts anyone's armor, actually. I think everyone has more armor. I've got 14. Right, okay, so you're going to take half of that, actually. So okay. You're, so you're going to take half of that roll, and you are going to take only a four. So, you know, you, you get some frost in your hair. Wait, you rolled a four and I take half of that, or you roll an eight and I got four? No, I uh, I rolled a four, so you only take two. Yeah, cool. Not, uh, not too great for my big ultra boss here that everyone manages to dodge his first attack. But, you know, that's okay, because, again, mm-hmm. he's, he's going to use up more of his boss bullshit, and he's actually going to point his spear uh, directly at uh, you, Antoine, and he's going to try and hit you. I do. <laughs> you know what you did. <laughs> I didn't do it. He did it. <laughs> okay, so that's an 18 plus 4, so that actually does hit you, and a beam of Frigid energy starts shooting out the end of his staff uh, to your general area, and that is going to do four. Five. So that's going to do eight, nine, seven, nine, 12 damage, 12 ice damage to you. It's cool. I'm not tripping on it. It's fine. It's fine. You're, you're a tank, Antoine. Antoine doesn't yeah. get hit a lot. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, so I have, I have an idea, and I need to know if it's plausible. So he say so you're saying that the lower temperatures are keeping the monsters docile right now, yes. yeah? Yes. Uh could I, in theory, use my sacred flame uh and kind of Jurassic World the Manticore <laughs> out of the the grate and over to us? So like charge at this dude? Let me let, let me look at what Sacred Flame does again. A flame like radiance descends on a creature that you can see within range. The target must dis- uh, succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 1d8 radiant damage. The target gains no benefit from cover for saving this. Okay, so the thing about Sacred Flame is because you are a cleric, it is a religious spell. When they're talking about fire, they don't mean it in like a campfire way. They mean it in like holy fire, Jesus-y stuff. All right, so it's not it's not hot enough to wake him up. No, you do have a flaming crossbow though, so I mean, you know, that's an option. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's. I an feel option. like I should probably start putting some damage on this boss though. Can't just tease him with sex tapes. <laughs> yeah, n- <laughs> not forever. No, no, not forever. All right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to take a crossbow. <laughs> Hold up. Okay. Oop. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say it's not your turn. Oh, it's, oh my bad. That's all right. Uh, yeah, it uh, then becomes Corbin's turn, who rolled only a four. So what are you gonna do now? 
I'm going to punch the grate that we're staying on and then unleash my fire fist. Oh, all right. There you go. Now, there we go. Now I have to decide how much health the grate has, but go for it. And I'm going to say because it's right there that, yeah, you can hit it if you want, if you want to spend a turn doing oh. it. Because it's like, it's not going to move. It's a fucking grate. I just need to decide how much health it's going to have. Oh, so I don't need to roll to see if I hit. I need to roll for damage. Yeah, Got just roll it. damage. Okay. And the fire fist was a four. Mm -hmm. Roll that one. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be... Oh, and I get plus ten on that thing, too, from the fire and from my thing. So that is going to be 13. Okay. Hot dang. So, yeah, you, uh, you, put a, you put a dent in it. You definitely put a dent in it the first time, no doubt about it. And uh, the manticore still seems asleep right now, but uh, will maybe be stirring. You can't tell, but uh, you definitely did something. All right. uh, then I'm going to go ahead and use second wind. That's right. You can do that. Nice. Nice. Going to light the fire up even more. Okay. Rev up my red queen. There you go. <laughs> Rules of nature. Uh, that's another 13. Okay, hot damn. Literally hot damn. Now, again, you, you got the upgrade, so you can do three fire fists a day, so now you're just down, yep. to, down to the one. one. But uh, all right. So uh, you, you done did that. Uh, alrighty then, so with that, the turn order comes back again, and Antoine, it's your turn now. Uh, I guess I will... Can I shoot through the grate? Uh, you can, can I shoot the, the you... fire crossbow through the grate? You can try, but I will say roll with disadvantage, because again, it's like very, very fine holes in the grate, so you would have to, you'd have to be a fucking dead-eye shot to do it. Not impossible, but definitely difficult. Well, I did hit a spider already. I don't want to push my luck, so I'm just <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna aim at this guy's dome and take a shot. Uh, let's see. 18. Actually, you know what? Here's the thing. Actually, as I stop and think about it, you probably shouldn't have been able to use spiritual weapon again because you already used it on the spider. Fuck, that's my fault as a DM. Oh. The, the damage will stay, but uh, you probably shouldn't have been able to cast that. Hey, again. The, the second time it was harmless. It was it was it was just a visual psychological thing. Yeah, so it's that's not like true. I actually hit anybody. Yeah, so no, nothing is fucked yet, everyone. I'm a good DM. <laughs> I know what I'm yeah. doing, but uh, it's still yeah. your turn. Okay, so crossbow shot. Uh, so yeah, that's an 18, then a D8 plus 2, so that's 5 on the damage. Uh, so, uh, again, were, were you still aiming at the grate, or were you aiming at him? No, I was aiming at him. Uh, okay, well, what did you, uh, get? Did you beat his armor class when you rolled your D20? Uh, rolled an 18, and then I rolled a, uh, 3 plus 2, so okay. 5. Yeah, okay, that, yeah, that did, uh, that actually does hit him. Now, when you did that... Uh, were you rolling, uh, were you doing extra fire damage with your crossbow or were you just hitting them normally? I was, uh, just hitting them normally. Okay. So there unless you. extra fire damage is preferred here. Yeah. That's uh that's uh D four. Just roll a D four. 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 Okay. Yes. Uh, that fire arrow really seems to hurt him. What with his whole ice gimmick and shit. Ah, uh -huh, hack. Yeah. He, uh, he doesn't like that. He's very upset. Zutelon. <laughs> all right well i did my part there we go i just realized wait hold on i just realized don't i as a monk have a thing where if i punch someone i get to i get to punch again do you get flurry of blows at uh what is it at level one i think you do yeah okay yeah you yeah because we've already used that so i didn't need to use second win there did i no no you didn't but you did uh, this, yeah, this, well. this, this is the dangers of multi-classing everyone eventually you forget what you can do and corbin's already a monster hunter which has a bunch of other bullshit attached all right well now i know i can't i didn't need to but now i know i for future there you go all right so with that all done and out of the way it becomes uh vorlin your turn again uh okay so i want to use the chronic breath but it's cold so i don't even think it's going to do anything to him You know, uh, no, I'm going to use a, I'm going to do dual wielding okay. go at him again with uh, two weapons. Uh, I've got the rapier with uh, one and the uh, plus one short sword. Yeah. Okay. And I want to target his staff. Okay. Oh, that's a 19. Uh, yeah, that definitely hits. And that's a 20. 
Oh, yeah. So that's a hit, and that's a critical hit. So roll normally for the rapier and uh, roll double for uh, the short sword. Oh, uh, hold on a second. I forgot what my rapier... Uh, it was... I should have this memorized by now. It's a plus six uh, attack bonus, so it's a 1d8 plus three. Mm-hmm. So let me find my eight, which I have a million of here. I apologize. It happens. There you go. Four plus three is seven. Mm-hmm. And then what was the other one? It was the uh, the what are the stats on the uh, short sword? Uh, that would be that you get an extra to hit, but the damage is one d six plus whatever your dexterity is. Okay, so one d six plus my dex is three. Okay, but because that was a critical hit, you can double that, so that three actually becomes six. Six. So there you go. And then, but I only rolled a two, so let's call that an eight. Okay. Let's go. There you go. Now, what was it? Actually, I'm confused now. Too many numbers. <laughs> oh, it was an eight and a seven. Okay, eight and a seven. So, all right. So we do that across there. And, uh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, you you cut him the fuck up on that turn, actually. You're, you're a whirling tornado of death, and he actually takes a step back, and he is very, very unhappy with what you just did to him. Cool. Was uh, there any specific damage done to the staff? Uh, it definitely phases in and out a little after you hit it, and hitting it hurts him. So you, uh, you, you've been around long enough to realize that this guy is some manner of uh, warlock, and that his staff is uh, basically the source of his power and a little of his That's soul. That's what isn't I was it looking too. for. All right, cool. So yeah, you slash at the staff, and he actually ends up bleeding. So yeah, that's that's definitely like his uh, his freaking phylactery and shit. Uh, Overcompensating for something, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, so with uh, your turn done, it actually becomes Orion's turn now, and he is ready to pay back the horrible damage that you just did to him. And uh, he pulls up his staff, and he is going to swing at you not once but twice, and that is going to be fifteen. 16, 16, 16. So that's a nineteen. So I'm guessing that hits you the first time. Oh yeah. Okay, so he does that, he hits you, and then he's gonna... Because my armor class is only an 11 right now. Yeah, so he's like, uh... Well, no, you got your, uh... No, you guys didn't get your armor and ship... Or you guys didn't get your ship back, did you? When you left it? No, you did get your ship back. No, we did. We got our ship back. Yeah, we did. Okay, yeah. Then why is your thing only 11 now? I thought you had more armor than that. I got, a carry gear, leather armor, and AC is only 11. No, you got a... Are you reading an old one? Because you got a chain crop top off one of the knolls that brought you up to at least 14. I swear if I look at my sheet, you're at least 14. I, maybe I need to update my character sheet. Maybe you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's fourteen. It's fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see yeah. It right here. Yeah, as I as I thought so. Right. See, look, if I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you naturally. I'm not gonna thank you. Kill you <laughs> by taking chances. Uh, all right, he rolls again. He rolls another fifteen. So yeah, with all of that added together, uh, he gets another hit on you. So that's going to be. Uh, what is it? That's gonna be six. All right. Six, six, so that's 12, so he does, like, 12 ice damage to you. He fucking Darth Mauls ya. Son of a bitch. Yeah. And you're, uh... I, I, here's the thing, like, you w- that would probably hurt you more, actually, if you weren't uh, an ice dragonborn. Gotcha. Okay. So he, he can counter you, but you can actually counter him. Is the thing. That's relief. That okay. Is, that is a relief, uh... All right, then. So with that turn done, it is now going to be uh, Borland, I think. Yeah, it's your turn, isn't it? No, that was just my turn. No. Oh, wait. Sorry. No, it's Corbin's turn. Yeah, it? sorry. Yeah, Corbin. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. 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 he moved, and then it uh, comes back again. Or no, he... Or yeah, yeah, he's done because Corbin had the lowest one. So many fucking numbers to keep track yes. of. Yes, Corbin. It, it is your turn. Uh, I will punch the grate again. All right, go for it. Uh, that I'm not using fire this time, so that'll just be eight. Okay. Then I will use flurry of punches to punch it again, and that will be a. I just said eight, so seven. Okay. What's one below eight? Seven. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. So that's an eight and a seven for that together. So that's eight, and that's seven. It's looking pretty rough right now, actually. You are you are punching the shit out of it, good sir. Jesus Christ, this thing is taking over 40 points of damage. This thing has higher life points than me. I mean, it's a massive steel grate meant to keep a horrifying killing machine monster in, so, you know. 
I feel like most greats can take more damage than I can <laughs> in the real world. Fair, Fair enough. enough. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, all right. With that turn done, uh, Antoine, it becomes your turn again. All right. I am going to take another shot at Man's Dome. Oof. Six. Yeah, that, uh, that, 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 that arrow goes wide and misses him. It goes completely over his head. Hey, they can't all be winners. No, they can't. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And uh, with that done, Vorlin, it actually comes back to you now. Um, shoot. I feel like I'm the only one fighting this guy. Uh, let's do, um... Let's go back with another sneak attack. Actually, no. Let's do another uh, well, you, you can't, attack. You can't sneak attack him because he is, like, engaged with you right now. If he attacks oh, that's someone right. else... You could, but uh, he he is zeroed in on you now because you've uh, done the most damage to him so far. Right. Okay. So we're, we're gonna go dual wielding again. Okay. Uh, no. Which which dice are rolling good for me? These two were. All right. That's how you jinx it. Yeah, that's only a seven for the rapier. Uh, yeah, he, that bounces oh, off his armor. Shit. And it's only a ten. That also bounces I, off I even, his armor. It's not even looking. It's not even worth to look at the modifiers. Yeah, he's, uh, he's getting quite serious now after that one. In fact, it actually is his turn again. And you see him uh, do some crazy boss bullshit. He actually teleports behind you guys now to the other side of the grate before doing the stompy staff attack again to try and make a bunch of icicles fall on you. So let's see if that turn works. That's going to be 12. So that's 16. So who, uh, who gets hit by 16? Uh, okay. That's me. Okay, so uh, Vorlin and Corbin, you're going to get hit by a bunch of falling ice chunks from the ceiling, and that's going to be 8, 9, 7, 7, 7, 13. Oh, each? Yeah, you each oh, take God. 13 falling damage. This, this guy's a motherfucker. He's serious. I feel like this is the most damage you guys have actually taken. I've no, I'm taking them. way more. That's true. I, the the robot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was on the brink of death with those uh, jackals when we first started. <laughs> the first fight. That. Yeah. This is the worst I've done since the first fight. Yeah. Can't uh, can't say I haven't turned it up. And uh, all right, so he's uh, gonna end his turn then after doing two boss bullshit moves. And uh, with him done, uh, it becomes your turn, Corbin. I will punch the great again. All right. There's another eight. That's that is, wow! I'm rolling exactly that one thing over and over. The the grate is literally holding on by a freaking thread at this point. Flurry of punches, go oh, again! Oh, thank God! There Come you on. go. All right, yeah, you seven. You punch it with your big meaty ham hock fist, and it eventually just shatters off the hinges. And uh, at this point, uh, Taven starts getting a little scared, and he's like, "You have no idea what you have done, you stupid mountain man!" He, he That's what right I open. always say. <laughs> <laughs> that is a mantra call. You have no idea what you are doing. And, uh, yeah, with that done, it becomes, uh, what is it, Antoine's turn again? Uh, I shoot a fire arrow down into the hole uh, to wake up the mana core. All right. I'm, I'm going to say because it's in a small enclosed place that, yeah, you just do that. You let rip with a big fire arrow, and yeah, it fucking snarls, and it's just... It's and when I say, welcome to the jungle, baby, you're gonna <laughs> die. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I love every bit of that. Also, it's too, now uh, now that the grade is gone, and now that the manticore has joined the melee, I now need to roll for manticore to see what its shit is. Uh, oh, that's a five, so it rolled very low. So we won't see the Manticore until later. <laughs> it's okay. one above me. Yeah, there you go. Slightly faster than its arch nemesis. Uh, Is there a way I can combine persuasion and animal handling to convince that Manticore to attack him but not us? You, you had an easier time with the horses and other stuff, because I think horses are either good-aligned or neutral-aligned creatures in the Monster Manual, but a Manticore is actually classified as evil, so... Okay, all right. So no persuasion. Although apparently they're doing away with evil races in the next update that comes in November, so that's pretty cool. 
Good. We should pause here until November. <laughs> yeah, really. Wait for <laughs> the longest wait in between a turn. I'm saying that about life in general, but thanks. Yeah. It's like, has he has he chilled out yet? All right, I want to talk to the Matacore. We got to we got to wait for that patch in the next update. All right, uh, Vorlin, it is now your turn. Okay. Um, I'm taking a gamble. I'm gonna do my draconic breath. All right, go for it. And uh, that is... That's actually, yeah, you, uh, I, I have to actually, because it hits regardless, but I have to roll. If I roll a, lower than a 15, it's a hit. If I low under, it's a miss, but I still take half damage even on a miss. Okay. So that's, oh, that's a natural one. So yeah, you definitely hit. Cool. So it's eight plus your constitution modifier yes. and takes 2d6. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, and that deuces. So that's four. And then it's eight plus my constitution. Yeah. So we're 12. Well, no, it's, then... it's you roll two D6s, and then uh, the other stuff was for me to roll. So it's just two D6s. Oh, okay. Just two D6? Yeah. That, that's only a four. Yeah, dra dra sad. Dragon Breath is really great at first levels, but it gets less and less amazing as they level up. That's a problem with the Dragonborn as a playable race. <laughs> they, they need to fix that in the next update so uh how much damage yeah was so that? pause until november that sounds good yeah, yeah. for real uh. <laughs> well here's you know the Should... oh you first i was gonna say regardless of the damage it doesn't matter because this guy is like a fucking ice warlock so your frost breath shoots out and is absorbed by his staff and does no damage to him i thought so i knew it wasn't gonna work and, I read that shit and he um, and he looks at you like you fucking peasant did you actually think that was going to work do you put out fire with the gasoline and you know and before this ends because i i cannot take many more hits i'm gonna take cunning action there you go. And uh, I'm going to take a bonus action on my turn, mm -hmm. which is going to be like a, a, a dash. All right. So, yeah, you you dash yeah. away from the now uh, opening grate and everything, and uh, you, uh, you you disappear like a ninja in the night uh, amongst the sea of cages. Wait, did, did he just leave us? He batman out. I mean, he's, yeah. still, he's still in there. It's just you can't see him because he's dashed away. All right. As long as he's still here and not all <laughs> banging this dude's sister again. Uh, <laughs> Look, man, I deal with my shame in its own way, okay? <laughs> he's uh, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, like running away. Yeah, <laughs> running away. He's licking it's the old It's not healthy. Ones. I didn't say it was healthy. It's fine. All right, so is it Crazy Man's turn again? Uh, yeah, because Vorlin is done. So, yeah, it's Crazy Man's turn now. And now that he has seen what you guys have done with the Manticore, he start, he's starting to sweat a little bit, which is amazing because the room is filled with ice. And again, he spins his staff around in a magical manner, and you see uh, three almost exact ice sculpture copies of him just kind of rise out of the ground. And now he's basically uh, got three of these guys in front of him as like a human shield made to look exactly like him if he wasn't a narcissist enough. Interesting. Are they, do they do anything, or are they just uh, a shield that he's put up? They're standing guard right now blocking him, and uh, if your heard's a ghost, you'd probably assume his armor class is up now because he's got people in front of him, but you don't know that. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I guess I could do a guiding bolt next Time Ooh, that's clever. Uh, so actually, Corbin, it's your turn now. No, it's the Manticore's turn. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Manticore moves first. You're absolutely right. So, okay, you hear the snarling and scratching of claws in the in the shaft down below. And before you know it, the Manticore has burst through with great strength. And it is in the air. And it's flying around. And it is just absolutely enraged right now. In fact, it basically took its whole turn to climb the shaft and get up there, but it's uh, it's up there now, and it's flying around, and you don't know if it's friend or foe just yet. Yeah. Should we should we just, like, leave? <laughs> seems, like, seems like it'll have more beef with him than with us. We didn't hold a captive. We let it go. <laughs> yeah, it's right? using ice, which it hates. Yeah. <laughs> so for my turn, I'm not going to do anything. I am going to brace myself so that I can counter whatever comes my way. Interesting move. All right, there you go. Everyone taking defensive stances. All right, all right. Also um, because I don't want to piss off the manticore. 
<laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna cast Shield of Faith. Oh, smart. On who? Over everybody. Uh, wait. Uh, is it? Just one person? That's a good question. Let me look at this. Again, we, we use spells so sparingly. A shimmering field appears and surrounds a creature of your choice within range, granting it a plus two bonus to armor class for the duration. So, uh, yeah, who are you going to put that on? I'm going to put it on Vorlin since he's the one who's been getting up close and personal with him. All right. You, uh, him a little bit more wherever recent. I am. <laughs> you, uh, you feel the warm light. Actually, no, that's true. You can't put it on Vorlin because oh, you, right. you don't know where he is. You sister fucker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but not his own, though. <laughs> yeah, not his own, obviously. He has some kind of standards. All right, so I guess yeah, I Yeah, what kind of a weird psycho would say something like that? We all just turn towards the Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Uh, so, yeah, so I can't even heal him since I can't see him. That's the problem with disengaging. <laughs> uh, uh, so I guess I am going to put Shield of Faith around myself. All right, so you're armor class shoots up there josh from being 17 which was already really freaking high because you are the tank of this group to 19 good luck fellers so you're a you're a fucking steel wall now josh you're the fucking you juggernaut over here rock hard baby let's do it <laughs> all day every day <laughs> Uh, all right, so with your turn done, uh, it becomes Vorland's turn again. What, uh, what are you going to do in the shadows, buddy? What do we do uh, in the shadows? Yeah, what do we do? Uh, let's see. Sh shortbow, ranged attack. Ooh, smart, uh, smart, Plus smart. four to hit. Uh, one D6 plus two piercing damage. All right, he's, uh, so he's, not hoping... fighting, he's not fighting you right now. You can actually use sneak attack with, uh, with your ranged weapon. Let's, let's stack as much stuff as possible. Thank you so much. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so, so you're shooting at him, not the manticore? No, I'm not shooting at the manticore. Okay. So uh, roll and see what you get. Okay. So the short bow is a, was it 1d6? Yes. There we go. Where is that? Oh, wait. Or do I, do I need to be rolling my regular 20d? Yes, to see if you hit his, yeah, his new hit. armor class. I, I just like to assume. I'm like, oh, I'm going to hit this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, that's 14 plus... No, I just rolled a regular 14. Okay, so it doesn't hit him, but one of his ice doubles does get hit and uh, actually crumbles to pieces. They seem to be very poorly constructed. Okay. So yeah, one of that his uh, ice doubles eats it. So now he's down to two ice doubles, but they're still kind of hanging around in a defensive position. Oh wait, hold on one second. Let's backtrack for a sec. I may have screwed this up because well, I rolled the I rolled my twenty D, but it's plus four to hit, right? Right. So that takes it to an eighteen. Is that going to affect anything? Okay, then in that case, yes, you actually do hit him, but you only do half damage. So yeah, what what was the damage on that if you didn't roll it? One d six plus two piercing. So that's a four. That'll take it down to a two. All right. But it's plus two piercing damage. Right. Okay. So yeah, you you actually kind of nick him in the cheek, and he's like, "God damn it! What do I have these ice doubles for if they cannot protect me?" <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> the more I, I talk just with, make a wall. The more I talk with this guy, the more he's becoming the iron sheik. Fuck. Monty Python. Yeah, fucking <laughs> bullshit, Hulk Hogan. I thought he was the dude from Matrix Reloaded. I mean he can be that too. Any well, villain is French guy. guy. Yeah. But alright, but because you hit him though, you actually didn't destroy his ice double, so actually he still has like an ice entourage guarding him. Ah shoot. Okay. All Take right. out Ice Turtle next. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, all right, so with that done, it then ends up becoming... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, it actually becomes his turn now, and uh, he is equally confused. He does not know what to do right here. Does he continue to attack you? Does he continue to try and uh, attack the new manticore that has shown up on him right now? Uh, I, I guess he's more pissed at, uh, what is it, Corbin than anything. For unleashing this fucking thing, yo, you have no idea what you're doing. So he is going to, again, try and take two big boss swings at uh, you, Corbin, and see what he can do. And so that's going to be, okay, so that's a natural one. So he kind of slips on his robe as he is angry and misses <laughs> his first hit completely. Oh, no. Nice. I hope no one was watching that. And uh, then he's going to try again, and that's going to be a 13. 13, which is not enough to hit you. What did he try and swing at me with? Uh, his ice staff. 
Okay, cool. I'm still braced for an attack. Can I you reach are. up and grab the ice staff as it comes down? Roll a strength and let's see what happens. Uh, let's see, plus three, so that makes 15. I also rolled a 15, so you actually just kind of go back and forth on it there, and neither of you are strong enough to actually make anything happen. Holy shit. Mm. I know normally... still kind of work to our advantage, though. I know that's the great Corbin move there. It's like, I take your weapon away from you. Now what are you going to do? Oh, I wasn't going to take it away. <laughs> oh, I wasn't <laughs> taking it away. Uh, all right. So, yeah, he, he made two moves and did not hit you. So, yeah, that's his turn done. And uh, with that, it ends up becoming... Uh, Manticore. He, yeah, it's the Manticore's turn. So the Manticore mm -hmm. is flapping around, really scared right now and, like, really confused. And it is going to fly right up to the roof of this place. And it is going to try and bash it with its full body strength. And we're going to see what that becomes. So, uh yeah, it hits it pretty good, and you start seeing, like, you know, more ice chips and shit falling, and the building kind of rumbles all around you, but it, it seems to want out, is what it wants. And, uh, yeah, it's gonna be its turn, and, uh, Corbin, it's you, buddy. Okay. Uh, I'm going to guess that What's-His-Face is still pretty close to me? Uh, yes, uh, hidden behind his ice entourage, but yes, he's... No, uh, so they, he jumped back and they got in front of him. Okay. They, they, they kind of uh, move with him. They kind of got like a, like a phalanx thing going on. Uh, I'm going to brace for attack again. Okay, there you go. That's, that's, that's your whole turn. You're going to brace for it. Be, be the frog in the pond. He does not seek the fly. The fly will come to him. <laughs> uh, all right, so with you bracing, then it becomes Antoine's turn again. All right, I want to use Guiding Bolt right. to uh, swoop around, just want it around the ice sculptures and pop him in the noggin. Okay, that sounds good here. Let me read the thing for God. Well, a flash of light streak towards a creature your choice was in range. Make a ranged spell attack against the target. On a hit, so you still need to take uh, make the hit, the target takes 4d6 radiant damage and uh, everyone else gets advantage on hitting him for the rest of uh, the fight. Oh, nice. Alright. So I roll a 20. Yes. Uh, okay. All right, and then 4d6, does that mean I roll the d6 four times? Uh, that's only if you hit him, though. You still need to actually be able to hit his armor class, but because it's a spell, you get to add something different than the other guys don't. You get to add, uh, you get to add three to your uh, plus two, because that's your uh, spell casting modifier. So that would make it a plus five with my 20? That would be a 25, or? No, that's it. Well, well did you roll 20? Yeah. Oh, well, that's a fucking crit. Then, yeah, yeah, you got it. Okay. <laughs> then, yeah, you, you super fucking get him, and because you super got him, you get to roll six four times, and then you get to add, uh, what is he, you basically get to times two that. So, yeah, you, you fucking smack the shit out of him with this whole Yeah, smell. I did that shit on purpose, too. <laughs> yeah, hot damn. All right, so, so I rolled D6 four times? Yes. All right, first one is a one, not looking great. Second one is a three? Yes, four. Then a two. Okay. So then a five. So, 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 so that's so that's uh, is it eleven or twelve? So eleven. Yes. Oh. Okay, yeah, let's say that. So, uh, yeah, you you do 22 points of damage against this guy. Your yes. ra radiant light flies from your hand as if, you know, your god upon high is watching you. And his eyes are like, ah, they burn, they burn with the holy light. And, uh, yeah, yeah. He, and he's glowing right now, which means that from now on, whenever anyone makes an attack against this dude, uh, you get to roll twice and take the highest number to uh, hit his armor class because he is shining like a fucking Christmas tree right now. Antoine coming through in the clutch. For real, for real. This is some this is some <laughs> crazy God. shit. Uh, all right, all right. So I guess I, I guess I'm that I'm done here, right? <laughs> take your walk away from the fight like you guys got the rest of this, right? Take okay. your bow and uh Vorlin, it's uh, it's you again, dog. Okay, am I still uh firing from the shadows? Uh yeah, so far. And uh yeah, he ain't looking at you yet. Okay, so let's do another sneak attack on top of a ranged attack with the uh, short bow. Okay. And we're going to do that. Oh, shit. <laughs> Two Did plus four. An old timey splatoon? <laughs> it sounded yeah, like it. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so you miss him, but you do destroy. Uh, well, again, well, you get to roll twice because. Uh, because you get advantage because of the shiny light. So even if your first yeah. d20 roll sucked, don't worry, you get to roll again. 
Oh, that one's a 19 plus four. Oh yeah, so you, that's uh, a 23. Yeah, you uh, you hit him again, and uh, you get to do your sneak damage too because uh, he can't see it from the shadows. Right. So sneak is once per turn, deal extra damage one creature hit. Uh, so it's attack another roll. Uh, yeah, another yeah. D6, and you add it all together. All right, hold on a second. I'm grabbing all the dice. So many dice. I think it's that makes it two d six. Yes. Okay. That's eight plus two piercing damage. Okay, so yeah, you do ten damage to him, and he he's bleeding now. For the first time in the fight, he's actually bleeding. All of this damage is starting to uh, pile up on him, and he doesn't look great. And thank uh, goodness. It uh, it'll actually be his turn next. And uh, he is going to once more do some wizardy bullshit, and he is going to move his hands around, and you see a bunch of snow and ice kind of fly up around him, and his skin kind of morphs and changes in a way you've never seen before, and he gets, like, spiky icicles sticking out of him now. A proto-evolution Bobby Drake, huh? <laughs> <laughs> By God, the second evolution. <laughs> no one ever expects the second evolution. <laughs> And uh, all right, so yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be his turn now. And uh, yeah, but people who really know D and D know what I probably just did, so uh, that's fun. Uh, all right, so yeah, with his turn done, it becomes the Manticore's turn again. And the Manticore, at this point, after you know smelling blood and seeing the big shiny light that this guy is now, can no longer basically ignore this freaking dude, and so he is gonna try and take. Uh, a dive bomb at him, basically, is what he's going to try and do. And because the Manticore is made up of so many different uh, monstrous parts, it also gets a bunch of moves because it, too, is actually a fucking boss as well. So That's a good boy. It really <laughs> is. Boss, fight. Boss, fight. Boss, so fight. Make him a fight. Yeah, tell me about it. So, all right, so it is going to try and smack him with his claws first. And that's going to be, okay, yeah, 18, 19. <laughs> so that definitely hits him. And uh, he gets another roll in there as well. He's going to try and spin around and smack him with his big spiny tail. And that is also going to be, oh, that's going to be an 18. So, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to load the damage up on this is what we're going to do. That's going to be 12, and that's going to be 10. Wow, the Manticore is rolling really well, guys. It's a good thing you didn't fight him. So that's going to be, oh, that's going to be over 20 damage for him. And uh, all the ice sculptures are now destroyed at this point. But... Uh, a uh, strange thing happens uh, when the Manticore touches uh, Taven at this point. The ice and frost that is on its body actually starts crawling up the body of the Manticore, and you see it actually kind of getting frostbitten just touching him. This yeah. is going to be a White Walker situation, is it? That's a, that's a spell called Armor of Agathy for those who know uh... their D&D, &D, and it's a, it's a bitch of a warlock move. Uh, uh, man, I was just gonna roll to go hide in the office and look through the window until like they finish what they had. <laughs> they fight about. it out. I mean, fuck, it's, it's an option now. So, all right, so the Manticore is done, and Antoine, it absolutely becomes your turn again. Uh, no, it's uh, uh it's Corbett's turn. oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot. See, I've got too many. Th I got greats. I got bosses. I got everything. <laughs> he's uh, he's looking super fucked up right now, and all of his ice sculptures are gone. By the way. Okay, I'm going to... We established that anything that happens to his spear happens to him as well? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm going to run up to him and grab his spear with my fire fist. Oh, shit. All right. Yes. Now, okay... It, it, this is a good plan. I, I love this plan. Ro roll, roll a regular attack, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, that is a 13. Okay. Not great. At 13 altogether, you don't add nothing, or is it just 13 altogether? Well, you just said, like, what is it? Is it attack, or yeah, that means it's strength? Yeah, roll a, roll a regular attack, so yeah, just... Uh, roll oh, a... with strength at 16, then. Okay, so that's just strong enough to hit it, but because you then light up your fire fist, it becomes, uh, what is it, a fire attack, which does double damage to Ice Guy, but because you hit his armor class anyway, we'll just say it does regular damage, so roll... Roll for your fist attack and then put an extra D4 fire on top of it. You mean, well, shit. 
roll a, roll a d4, uh, and then, uh, like you would normally do for an attack, then roll a d4 on top of it. Oh, okay. Well, then that first one was a 3, but plus the 5 and another 5, so that's 13. And it, Jesus Christ, it's been... I've only rolled, like, not 3 twice tonight. Uh, <laughs> so that is uh, 26 in total. Damn. That, no, because you're only rolling D4s. That shouldn't be. But I get plus five for my fist attack and then another plus five for element. That's right. You're a thing. No, you, uh, the elemental attack, you don't get to add. The elemental attack is its own special modifier. Hey, what's this other plus five that's right here? Uh, here, let me look at your friggin' sheet. I, I felt like there was some confusion here. Uh, Aaron Fighter. Yeah, because I was asking about this weeks ago. Okay, yeah, you got your fire fist to attack, which is plus five. So that means you roll, and then whatever you roll from the d20, you put five on it. And then when you do your 1d4 attack, you put 5 on it, which is also your strength. But the other d4 I'm talking about, the fire damage, is just 4 on its own. Uh, okay. okay, so that's 13 to begin with, and now we just roll another plus 4. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then that's a 2, so that's 15. 15. If someone in the chat would like to make a diagram of what just happened, or a <laughs> chart, that would be great. Okay. Oh, I checked out for a second once the numbers started flying. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> they weren't my numbers. <laughs> regardless, it's a very powerful attack because yeah, it's fire. It burns him up. He starts sweating. You see his clothing start catching fire, and yeah, he's uh, he's not a happy camper in the slightest. And uh, all right, with that, uh, it's actually going to be uh, yeah, because you moved, and then uh, yeah, Antoine, it's uh, your turn again. All right, a little bit of that flame and crossbow action right to his noggin. Oh, there you go. All right, let's see what this does. There you go. Uh, fuck, that's not enough. Seven? Seven, no. Your flaming crossbow fires right over his head, but it's appreciated. Everyone knew what you were going for. Yeah, no. Yeah, I appreciate everybody's Thanks, appreciation. <laughs> All right, Vorlin, uh, back to you again. I, You know what? I'm sticking with the what's working right now, and that is hiding. It just... Yeah. Your camping uh, strategy. Pretty much. I'm that guy. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we're going to do another short bow, short bow ranged weapon, and we're going to do it with uh, the sneak attack. Okay, hot damn. Uh, all right, let's go with this one. That's 16 plus 4. Yep, that hits. That's a 20, so I'm going to do a 1d6. Mm-hmm. Or is it 2d6 now? Well, it's uh, yeah. the, the sneak attack, much like the elemental fire damage, is just something you get to roll to add on to your regular attack. Okay, so damage to hit to have advantage. Must use finesse. So I should just. Oh, God damn it, I forgot I had Flurry of Fist. Ah, Sorry. This is the problem with multiclassing. We forget what we can do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I would have remembered if I had just stuck with Monk, yes. <laughs> T tell you what, if like if you want to respec at some point, I can totally help you respec yeah. if you want. It's not respecing. It's that we've been going for three hours, and I'm forgetting what I can do. It happens. <laughs> well, I will tell you at this point that Antoine, with your eye patch, you can see his health aura go from orange to red, so he's on his last leg. Let's there finish him off, fellas. I got a big cup of pomegranate juice so, I want to drink after oh, this. Oh, God. <laughs> Bring I it back. We got 1d6 plus 3, so I did a 4 plus 3 is 7. And then add the 2 for piercing damage, so that's going to make it a 9. 9 altogether? All right. So, yeah, mm -hmm. your your arrow flies from the darkness and strikes him, like, right in the kidney. And, like, he's, he, he's hanging low right now, and you actually feel, what is it, the temperature start to return to this place. Everything starts kind of melting around you right now. He's not dead, but he's definitely having a hard time standing up and also maintaining the ice illusionary shit that's going on here. Is what he's... Sister. Someone end this guy. Yeah, really. It's, it's his turn now, yes, and then the man the is going to end him. It, it is indeed yeah. his turn, and he is he is so pissed at you, uh, Vorlan. Always you're here ruining my fucking plans. Always, Bring you, it. you goddamn dragonborn. He snaps his fingers to do a teleportation thing to your general area, and he is again going to try and take his two big boss swings against you, and that's going to be 30, 40, 40, 40. So 17, does that hit you on the first one? Uh, my but my 14s and or my uh, attack, or my armor. armor class is 14. Yes. Okay, so that first one hits you, and he rolls up again, doing his Darth Maul spinny shit, and that's okay. That's only a seven, so he doesn't hit you with that one, but he does end up doing six and seven, seven. He ends up doing another uh, 12 just in one swing. He really, really hits you. Okay, 
for for everyone playing at home, that takes me down to two. <laughs> what? Yeah. He's he's been wailing on him the whole fight. He's really singled yeah, out man, Portland. He's been getting his ass, but we just been kind of recording it for World Star. <laughs> <World Yeah. Star. laughs> but uh, but yeah, his uh, his turn is officially done right now, and the Manticore gets to move again. And uh, yeah, it's not done with this big shiny bastard uh, who again kept it in a cage and who he is not a fan of at all. And because it is a Manticore with multiple appendages, it gets to take multiple attacks as well. And that's going to be nineteen on the first one. And for Jesus. Yeah, so yeah, both of its attacks hit, and it's gonna end up doing uh, ten right off the bat, and two right off the bat. So it ends up doing twelve damage to it. He is now in this thing's mouth at this point, and uh, he's not doing so hot. But uh, again, he still has that thing going on where if you hit him, it does ice damage. So like it's getting really nastily frostbitten right now, being that close to him and touching him like he is. And uh, with that, is everyone still there? No. I'm still here. We lost everyone for just a hot yeah, second. No, okay, uh -oh. making sure. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh, hopefully, yeah. Don't fuck up right now. Just when we're almost done. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, the Manticore is done. It's turn, which means, uh, yeah, hey, Corbin, it becomes your turn again. All right, he's in the mouth. Yeah, uh, he is. Hmm. Is the Manticore, like, shaking it around, oh, yeah. or is it a pretty easy shot? He's uh, he's chomping up him pretty good. I mean, you could try and do something here. No, it seems like a bad plan. <laughs> uh, he's chomping him, but the Manticore is being hurt, too, by the armor of Agathy. Seems like they're taking care of each other right now. Yeah, I have no manticore healing spells. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just gonna brace for an attack. I got. I'm, All right, brace. This on problem. This problem solves itself. There you go. <laughs> All right. So uh, with that out of the way, then it becomes uh, Antoine's turn again. I do believe. Yeah. Uh, uh, I still don't know where Kirk is. Right. Where uh, is? Well, you know where he is now because he teleported behind him and the Manticore yeah. flew to finish the fight. So, oh yeah, you know where everyone is. And he's still glowing, so you still get advantage if you want to shoot him with your crossbow. Oh, god damn it. I feel like that's going to piss off oh, the Oh, god Manticore. damn it. I didn't take care... I didn't use the advantage either ah, when I charged into attack. I could have gotten a higher hit. God damn it, we got to remember. Oh, well. I get that, that, that. That's only to hit his armor class. You don't do more damage if you do more on the armor class. It's just to hit him in general. So, yeah, but we, hit, but we hit him evenly on the, like, right. I matched him on armor class. That's right, you could have done more. Oh, well. Retroactive. What's the likelihood that I hit the Manticore shooting at him with my crossbow? Because I have not, I'm James Harden in it right now from the field. <laughs> the, the Manticore is very big, but you also are, like, twice as likely to hit him now. So, I mean, it's totally up to you. All right, I am going to shoot... The, whatever part of him is hanging out of the Manticore's mouth, I'm guessing it's his bottom half. Yeah, it's it's his torso that's getting shooed on right now. All right, so right in the knee, giving him an arrow to the knee. All right. Uh, <laughs> and I rolled a D20 17. Mm -hmm, that hits. Uh, let's see, that's a D8. And is this, uh, a, that's a, is this a fire arrow <laughs> or a regular arrow? Uh, fire arrow. Okay, because they do double. Yeah, fire arrow. Uh, so I rolled a five, but I get to roll again, right? Uh, Advantage, no, that's, yeah? that's only to hit him, not for damage. Okay, all right. So, yeah, no, uh, I rolled a five plus two, so a seven. Okay, so, yeah, your fire arrow uh, leases from your crossbow, and you smack him uh, right in the knee where you had meant to hit him. But because it's a fire arrow, it actually dispels the crazy ice magic shield that's around him, which means the manticore can much more easily devour this guy, which he does in a number of just sickening chomp, chomp, chomp. And, uh, yeah, he becomes bloody, gristly bits at this point before eventually just flying up and finally shattering through uh, the top of this makeshift zoo and just flying away now that its jailer is fucking dead. Boom! The Manticore just left us alone! <laughs> That's it. <laughs> there you go. Fight over. da 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 Oh, hell uh. yeah. Borland's not allowed to have sex anymore. It gets us <laughs> into trouble. Not a problem. No problem. 
So yes, you stand victorious now, 500 gold richer, you slayed a manticore, you now have an entire zoo filled with Joe Exotic style monsters should you want to do something with them, and uh, you now know the name of uh, the gargoyle, the villain who's been bedeviling you this whole time. What was his name? I forgot, damn, that was so I long forgot. ago. <laughs> D- D- Dagan. You only D- got it once. Dagan Knox. Dagan, Dagan. Knox, okay. All right. Got it. Right, isn't that the guy who was? Wait, who's the guy who was like skimming stuff off the side? Ah, uh, this that that was Orion. That was the guy who just got eaten. No, no, no. Who was the guy that was like? Everybody was like, "Oh, he's got his own side thing going on." Is that oh. Dagan? Oh, that was Skrull. Skrull was the guy stealing drugs from the Ballers. He was the guy who first hired. Him. No, 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 no. Other, other. Uh, it's no, so the guy that the so delivery guy people. told us oh, about. Oh, oh, uh, Dex. Dex was uh, got his Dex, robot yes. side. Dex was Orion's right hand man. Actually, you you met oh, Dex okay. when you left uh, the bathhouse. You didn't ask for his name, but that's who that was. That was Dex. That's the okay. robot guy, right? The the guy who seems yes. to be working with the robot guys. Right. So there you go. So. All right, you guys. That's a pretty fucking good act break right there. Thank I would you, say. Thank you because I was. Like we had to go another round. There's no way I was going to survive. I know that was down to the wire. I really tested you. So uh, yeah, thank you, uh, all 14 people who hung out. This this was a long one. We almost went a full 13 hour, or uh, three hours. But I'm glad that we finished that when we did. That's uh, it's a big big uh, big milestone for the campaign. Everyone, good shit. Congrats. That was good. Round of applause. Oh, that was fun. Uh-huh. That, was, that was a lot of fun. That was more difficult. That has to be I'm, the I'm, most complex fight we've had. Totally. I'm so sorry that. It is my shame that brings the longest episode to Cape <laughs> Simplex. Hey, oh, man. your shame had to be thoroughly explored. Yeah, it was therapeutic, guys. It's fine. And, uh, again, too, if you're listening to this later on YouTube when I upload these a couple months from now, please, please be sure to comment because it helps with the algorithm. And I also like to know people are watching and caring. There's like two people who comment on the YouTube and thank you. You are the true OGs. I appreciate it. And also, I got a couple of messages this week from people that uh, have been watching. So yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Glad this thing messages. They're pretty cool. We, we get a consistent about 300 a week people watching this, which I think that's awesome that 300 people care enough to watch us roll dice every other Thursday. Yeah, no, that's amazing to me. And with that, everyone, you can find us, not next Thursday, but the following Thursday for more Capes and Quests. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you.